Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is make it as easy as possible for you to understand the first level of music theory, the seven Greek modes. And I do set, categorize music theory into three levels. First one being the Greek modes, I call that isolated keys. Second level being uh, the major minor key system, I call that interactive keys. And finally, uh, the blues system, which I call uh, blended keys, blending keys. All right, but let's see if we can clarify this mode thing. Now, one thing, one good blessing we have here is that since the 12 keys are isolated from each other in this system, you would only have to think of one key and understand that. And then, you know, you could apply those principles to the 11 other keys. Um, for example, in any key, the first chord of that key is always a major chord. Second chord is always minor. Third chord is always minor. So, like that, that will always happen throughout all the keys. I think I've stressed this a whole bunch uh, so far. In any case, if you recall uh, from the last video I put up there, um, which was called, uh, um, I think it was called the Greek Modes Level 1 Theory, something like that. It's number 8A. Hang on one second. Yeah, and uh, I demonstrated playing the same exact chord progression twice in a row, but I used some inter interim music in between to change your sense of the root. Now, if you go to that video, it's called 08A, First Level Theory, The Greek Modes, okay? If you go to 5 minutes 45 seconds, you'll see this demonstration where I play the same exact chord progression the same exact way. I could have put it on a tape recorder and played it twice, um, if you guys remember what a tape recorder is. Uh, anyway, uh, let me show you here. Uh, first, we have the chords here of the key of C, okay? Uh, you'll notice the Roman numerals underneath. I'll explain that in a moment. The chords of the key of C are C, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor. We're leaving out the seventh chord because that's actually absorbed by the five chord uh, G7. Uh, I'll speak of that um, more thoroughly in the future. Just kind of put it aside. And the nice thing about putting that last chord aside is, first of all, it's not major or minor, it's diminished. And if it's related, to major or minor, you'd say it's more closely related to a minor chord. Uh, and I'm about to explain also what's the difference between major and minor. But if you look on that video, I will have played first the C chord, then the D minor chord, then F, then G, where the arrows are pointing. That was my chord progression. And the first time you heard it, C sounded like the root. The next time you heard it, I made it such, as the composer, I made it such that D minor was the root. Okay, now let me explain these uh, Roman numerals here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'd have seven for the diminished. I left that out for the sake of demonstration. Again, for the same reasons I mentioned. Uh, but when we do eliminate that uh, seventh step chord over there, it's not the seventh chord. It's the chord built on the seventh degree of the scale, okay? And I'm going to go into, I'll also explain the numbering and why when you hear five, seven, those are two different numbers, but musicians understand what 5-7 means, and you will too eventually. Right now, just kind of take it for granted, and I'll go into that later. All right, uh, so. So, the reason why we have these Roman numerals, you notice they're lowercase Roman numerals. Basically, all they're describing is the step of the scale that the chord was built on. First step of the scale, you build the C chord, of the C scale we're talking about. Second step of the C scale, we build a D minor chord. Third step, we build an E minor. Fourth step, we build an F major. Fifth step, we build a G major or possibly G7. Don't think about that. Don't bother with that yet. And finally, uh, the sixth step, uh, seventh step, A minor. When we leave out that seventh step chord, the chord built on the seventh degree of the scale, which is a diminished chord, when we leave that out, it's really nice because then we have a nice set of three major chords and three minor chords we could think about, okay? So um, the Roman numerals are simply what step of the scale the chord is built on, and if it's an uppercase Roman numeral, it's a major chord. If it's a lowercase Roman numeral, it's a minor chord. 
They teach this in music school. I just kind of refined it a little bit. I use parentheses for certain reasons in this. Like if you saw uh, VII over here, that would be in parentheses itself because it's a nominal chord because it's actually absorbed into this G7 I spoke about. Okay, now before I go on, there may be a very simple question to people. What makes minor minor and what makes major scale? What makes a minor chord a minor chord and what, what makes a, a minor scale a major scale? And on the flip side, what, what makes a major chord a major chord and a minor uh, a major scale a major scale? Well, when you look at chords, the first uh, note of the chord is called the root. The next note of the chord is called the third. And the next chord, note of the chord is called, called the fifth. Now, it's the third that's all important. The third is what determines whether the chord is minor or major. And um, I hope you are, have a grasp of the whole step, half step formula. Basically, the idea here, if these weren't chords and they were just scale notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, um, this would be whole step, whole step. All right, two whole steps makes a major chord, okay? From the root to the third makes a major chord. Now, if we look D minor to F, uh, not D minor, but the notes D, E, F, D, E, F, this is a step and a half. So notice the difference. It's slightly shorter than the two whole steps that C provided. So therefore, the step and a half interval is, is a minor. It's what makes the chord minor. And the same is true for scales. C, D, E, I go one, two, three. So you have to compare the root of the scale, C in this case, um, with the third step of the scale, E in this case. And if the scale goes whole step, whole step, you know it's a major scale. If this, however, was an E flat note, slightly lower, that would be whole step and then half step, step and a half, all right? that would be a minor scale and, and indeed when I make a C minor scale I have to have an E flat over there. So it's, it has to do with the distance between in a chord what's called the root and the third and in a scale the first step compared to the third step. If it's two whole steps distance you get a major scale. If it's a step and a half distance you get a minor scale. So I do hope that clears things up. Now I want to talk again because this is very 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 important the difference between root and key, okay? In the major minor key system, as I've kind of pounded into you guys, uh, there's no difference between a root and a key. So in other words, in the Greek modes, we could take any one of these chords and root on it, okay? I could, I could root on G, or I can root on A minor, or I can root on D minor, uh, but in the major minor key system, that's not true, all right? This is where a lot of confusion happens. Uh, because if I root on the C major chord, they're going to call that the key of C, and that's the only root chord in the key, they say, all right? If I root on D minor, they call it a totally different key called D minor, all right? So in other words, this no longer is considered the key of C when you root on the D minor in that system, which is completely effed up, if you ask me. It causes so much confusion. Uh, I think there could be a way to denote all this stuff where it, it kind of combines the major minor key system and the Greek modes together, but in a, a way that's clear, because right now it's, it's screwy. Okay, so um, in the Greek modes, in this first level of music theory we're dealing with, imagining that there's only one key in the world and that key is C, right? Um, the key itself is um, a set of notes that are grouped together based on the whole step half step formula as you learned earlier right and that's the key so if I'm in the key of C that doesn't mean C is the root in this system in the Greek mode system all right um, so the key itself is neutral if I say to you the key of G you're gonna knee-jerk react and go oh G is the root chord or G is is my root that is a mistaken notion because as you can see here in the Greek modes uh, you can make a root out of any chord. In the major minor key system, uh-uh. Now don't get me wrong, you could cover every possible chord in the major minor key system. In other words, every, all 12 major chords that you can create and all 12 minor chords you can create, that gives us 24 keys in that system. In the Greek system there's only 12, all right, and they're all major keys. Uh, all right, so in the Greek mode system, 
basically what I like to say is um, a key is a collection of notes bound together by the whole step half step formula whose root has not yet been determined. All right, that's important to say because we can only determine a root by a root chord of a progression. That's the only way it can happen. Okay, so uh, to continue on then, um, if I want to create a root, as I showed you in the previous video, um, I can just stress this D minor chord enough where your brain starts to think, okay, that's the root chord. So I could possibly hit a C, but it'll, you'll hear it wanting to go to D minor rather than just resting on C. Uh, I'll give you an example with the guitar real quick. Here's D minor. Right? That's enough to, to establish a root in your brain because you haven't heard any other music up until now. So when I hit C, it wants to go back. All right? All right, so we can change roots. And this is like composers use little tricks to change roots all around, okay? So if I'm in the key of C and I'm stressing this D minor root, but I want to change up at one point. Oh, sorry. Now, it wants to go back, okay? So, uh, yeah, that. Now one thing that it's essential to understand is don't think of the Greek modes so much as scales as the Greek modes are created by a root chord and the step of the, of the scale it's on is the name of the mode. In other words, when I did my chord progression C, D minor, F, G, where C was root, that has a fancy name called the Ionian mode. The first step of any major scale is the Ionian mode. We just happen to be dealing with C. But when I changed up our root, all right, I scrambled our ears and I played C, D minor, F, G again, but C wanted to go to D minor, just as you heard in this demonstration. Uh, that is called the Dorian mode when I root there. Now the weird thing is, I could play my Do, Re, Mi scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, against that D minor chord, and it'll sound like the Dorian mode. It won't sound like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. I demonstrated that fully uh, in my last video where I played all seven modes against one root chord and all seven modes became that one mode. Okay, so uh, anyway, what you're seeing underneath here, hang on a sec. What you're seeing underneath here is a very, very, very important chart missing one uh, chord as I told you and I'll be putting that chord back in in the future, but that, this is called the chord family template. And it's basically a generic layout of the chords of any key. In other words, if I built, uh, I don't know, a D flat scale, the, D, the first chord, D flat, would be major. See the uppercase one? The second chord of that key, E flat, would be minor. The third chord of that key, F, would be minor. The fourth chord of that key, uh, G flat, would be major, A flat, and so on and so forth. So this is a template uh, with all the different keys. and. Um, when we get deeper inside of all this stuff, I'm going to show you how to recreate this on the guitar so literally you can have an easy visual system for finding all the chords of any key. Really easy. It'll be visual, not, not wordy in your head. Um, and then you'll be able to simply uh, structure chord progressions. Now on to the next step of this whole thing. And this next step helps to make analysis a bit easier. Um, is that there are strengths, each, each of these root chords has a different level of strength. And I think at this point I'm going to put in our seventh step. Now, that would be based on the B. And uh, the seventh step, you see the little circle, that means diminished. But you notice it's lowercase. Now, lowercase meant minor. Why would I put that in lowercase? Because the so-called root of this chord, which really doesn't exist, but when we go from B to the note D, which is its third, it's a step and a half, not two whole steps. So it's kind of minor based, but the fact that it has a flatted fifth makes it unstable. Uh, again, we'll talk about that in the future. Okay, but now we're talking about the relative strengths of the modes. 
Now, uh, I'm, again, this is something I'll go into deeper in the future, but you may have heard the terms relative major and relative minor. In any key, the one chord and that the one root, now we're going into the major minor key system, by the way. The, one, the first chord, C, all right, is called the relative major. Then as I traverse down the steps of the sixth chord, A minor is this little sister minor key. And I believe I demonstrated the similarity between these um, and the connection these two have. Very, very important connection. Uh, it's going to explain a whole lot. Just remember that relative major, relative minor, very important. And if you think about it, if you want to remember it, it's the first step of a key is the relative major. The sixth step of a key is the relative minor. And they use the word relative because they are indeed very much related to each other. Uh, that's in the major minor key system, all right? In the mode system, I say that all of these are related, all right? C is related to D minor, is related to E minor, because why? They all arise from the same scale. But let's say that C, my relative major is dad, and A minor, our relative minor is mom, and all the rest of the chords are the kids. This one's the black sheep of the family, okay? If you think of it like that, of course the mother and the father have a very, very special relationship to each other, and of course they're related to the kids, and the kids are related to them, but that's a different set of relationships to the mom and dad. Okay, so, uh, now, it just so happens, I was talking about, there's something, a chart I have called the relative strengths of the modes. And, um, oh, here it is. Voila. So now, these are the chords of the key of C with their respective numbers and their respective mode names. The two strongest roots in the key of C are the one chord, C major, and the sixth chord, A minor. The two middle strength modes are uh, G major or G7 in a uh, blues sense, and then D minor, the two chord, and that's known as respectively Mixolydian and Dorian. Um, finally, the very weak modes are F Lydian, and it's a little not clear there. F Lydian and uh, E Phrygian. Now I'm going to tell you this right off the bat. These top four, right here, the most important modes in popular music. You will not hear, it's very, very, very rare, that you'll hear the Lydian mode in pop music or the Phrygian mode in pop music, and definitely not the Locrian mode. It's hard enough to keep a root on that. Probably some, I, I tried to write a Locrian progression one time. You have to pound the root so hard, and it really, it doesn't sound like the root anyway. Uh, so, how does this help analysis? Well, let's say you've got a, a chord chart for a song and you're trying to figure out uh, what mode it's in. You might know the key, but you might not know the mode. Uh, and the root chord is major. Well, we can eliminate Lydian right off the top because it will not be a root. All right. So that means you have two major modes to choose from, the Ionian and the Mixolydian. Now the minor situation becomes more complex because when the major minor key system was created, they created sub-modes, sub-modalities of the Aeolian mode. So this, the problem with modern music is we're mixing these Greek modes and we're mixing the key system. So there's much more complication when it comes to minor. But let's just say it's a simple song like All Along the Watchtower would be, which would be A minor, F, and G, where A minor is the root chord. Well, there's A minor root chord, there's our F chord, and then our G chord, and it roots on A minor. Now notice I did use the Lydian chord, the F major. Sure, it's usable, totally usable. So is the Phrygian chord. In fact, it's highly encouraged to use these. Don't want to leave any chords out, but they will not root. It's, very, it's that simple. Um, so this is a very, very important chart. Uh, I, I might uh, see if I could upload some documents. I don't think I could do it on my YouTube channel, but uh, I'll see about uploading documents that you can use to, um, to refer to in the future. Now, here's the thing. You have six chords in the key of C, four of which can be rooted. So you can 
root on the A minor and just mix around all the other chords and come back to A minor, you'll have a root there. You could root on G or G7, mix around the other chords, you could have a root on there. Now, if you'd like a demonstration of each of these modes and also why um, the Lydian and the Phrygian are weak, I'll do that right now. First of all, Ionian. So in the key of C, I have C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and we're skipping the uh, half diminished chord at the end. Sorry, I didn't mean to say half diminished. It is when you stack it, but I don't want to get into that. All right. So now, if you took a song, uh, uh, say, uh, Like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan, he roots, if the song was in the key of C, he roots on the C chord, then travels up the scale steps. Once upon a time, you dressed so fine, and didn't have a time in your prime, didn't you? But if you were to end the song, to end on that C chord. So that's an example of using the C root within the key of C. Now again I have to cleanse our palate of that C root because because of the relative strengths of the Mohs. Right now your ear is saying oh C is root. So if I try to use any other chords as root you'll your ear will want to take you back to C. So I have to confuse our sense of what is root for a second. Let me see if I can think of a minor. Hang on one second. All right, so uh, for using a D minor root uh, from the key of C, again, these chords are all from that chart, the key of C. Uh, I'm going to play the chord progress. I have to transpose into this key. Um, but uh, I'm going to play, um, since he recently passed on and rest in peace, Tom Petty's. Um, uh, last dance with Mary Jane, and in this key, it's really A minor rooted, but I'm taking it to a D minor root um, and playing the chords of the key of C. So that's um, nicely on that D minor roots there. So there's an example of, I gave you two examples so far, Like a Rolling Stone rooted in C, Last Dance with Mary Jane rooted in D minor. Um, really an obvious one for uh, Aeolian, which is the A minor root, uh, would be uh, All on the Watchtower. Let me get this in tune better. Okay, so good enough for government work. All in the Watchtower takes three chords from the key of C, A minor, G, and F. All right, and we get G, G, A minor, G, G, F. Or you could take the um, lead guitar solo to the classic Stairway to Heaven. Uh, Finally, um, all right, so we rooted so far on C in one case, which was uh, like a Rolling Stone, D minor in the next case, which was Tom Petty's um, uh, Last Dance with Mary Jane. A minor, we had two examples, All on the Watchtower and um, Lead Guitar Solo to Stairway to Heaven. By the way, there's one saying I have, you cannot copyright a chord progression, okay? Simply not. There's too much limitation to the amount of chords you could play. If people started copywriting chord progressions, you wouldn't be able to write a song anymore. Um, all right, so now, by the way, too, remember, before the, the four popular if you want to call them that, these modes are used in popular music, okay, because they have strong roots. So far I did C, I did D minor, and I did A minor, and now I'm going to do G, alright? And in this case, not a G7, just a plain old G, um, 
And again, I have to change keys to keep within the framework of C, so even though I'm playing classic rock songs, they're uh, actually being transposed to fit inside C. However, the principles remain the same. Uh, all right, the, the song I'm about to show you is, uh, um, um, Sweet Home Alabama, okay, and it's, uh, Now, that's uh, normally uh, the chords for that song are D, C, and G. But if you looked at the key of G, you'd find that G, C, and D are the 1, 4, 5 of the key of G. But it's rooting on the 5 chord, D, the 5th chord of the key, G, A, B, C, D. So what I did was I transposed that to C. I took the 5th chord of the key of C and then follow the pattern that came out of G. So in other words, uh, a five, four, one, five was, uh, came out of G, all right? I just took five, four, one, five from C and got the same sound in a different key, all right? So that uh, last one was Mixolydian. Uh, now, okay, so now we have, um, the weak modes. What was I saying about the weak modes? I was saying they cannot root. Uh, if I'm in the key of C, the Lydian mode is on the four chord F. And as soon as you see, hear that C chord, you you can't you can you can't even imagine rooting on F. But let's try to do it. hit the C chord, we're relaxing over there. We can't stay on the F. It doesn't want to stay there, okay? The same thing is true for the three chord uh, of the key of C, E minor. I went to an A minor chord because it can root there or or the C major, the two strongest modes, A minor, C major. So again, a good example is the song Nowhere Man by the Beatles. Uh, if I transpose that to C, now the third chord of C is E minor, and he takes that for the bridge. Beautiful bridge, by the way. back to C. There's no way that would feel like a root. So this helps your analysis a whole bunch. You can el eliminate three modes. The, uh, the uh, Lydian mode, the Phrygian mode, and the Locrian mode. Forget about them. There are four, at least in pop music. Now, would you, now you might be thinking to yourself, well, does anybody use these, uh, these modes that, that have weak roots? And yes, indeed they do. When you look at more experimental, uh, I don't want to use the word experimental, more sophisticated and involved music, such as high-level jazz stuff, classical stuff, that whole trip, then the jazzers kind of like that feeling of a vague root, like it's not quite rooted. So for an art artistic choice, uh, they do that, and it's actually a very pretty sound. You can make some beautiful compositions using the weak roots, but it, there's a reason why they don't become popular. It's because, you know, the more rarefied and arts that you get, the less popular it's going to be. It's very rare that you have, like, a high art form that everybody in the world just loves. It, it's usually more esoteric, and only the sophisticated, avant-garde of society get that stuff. Okay, so uh, I think I covered everything I covered when it comes to the actual structure. There's a few things I want to go through, but uh, right now in my book I have an introduction, the Greek modes, and then I have the second part of the Greek modes. It's called harmony in the Greek modes, and that will be the next thing we're going to explore, and we're going to explore the structure of these Greek mode scales and compare them to each other in what's called a parallel fashion. 
So once again, it's my greatest wish that you get something out of this and that you learn something. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time around. Bye.